Shorter rest periods result in greater increases in serum hormone levels. So what? What's up everyone? Soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here from Wolf Coaching. For a long time, rest time recommendations for muscle growth were made based on the post-exercise increases in hormones that you saw. Some of these hormones, like growth hormone or testosterone, have been linked to anabolism and muscle growth. Since the biggest increases in post-exercise hormones were seen with short rest periods, the recommendation to rest for less than a minute between sets was often made. However, a systematic review from 2017 by Grudzik and colleagues found that actually, in direct contradiction with acute hormonal responses to training, resting for less than one minute in trained participants appeared to decrease muscle hypertrophy. Well, there you go. Just rest for 61 seconds between sets and you'll have optimized the growth you could be getting from your training. Let's pack your stopwatch and let's go train. Or is there more to this? First, why would longer rest times over a minute be better than shorter rest times under a minute to begin with? It may have to do with tension. As you may recall from previous videos, there are three main categories of mechanisms that have been hypothesized to lead to hypertrophy. The first one is mechanical tension. The second one is metabolite accumulation. And finally, the third, potentially, is muscle damage. So let's hit metabolite accumulation first. Shorter rest times may actually give your body less time to get rid of some of the metabolites that you may be producing during exercise. However, metabolite production is also tightly linked to overall workload. And overall workload tends to be maximized when you take relatively longer rest durations between sets. So by resting less time between sets, you will be having more trouble getting rid of the metabolites you're producing, but you will also be producing fewer metabolites to begin with because you are impeding performance. And this leads me to my next point. Short rest times likely negatively influence hypertrophy through impeding performance. But don't take my word for it, let's just look at this 2022 study. In this study, they tried to find out why longer rest periods are better for hypertrophy. To do so, they created a study with four conditions. Each lower body limb, or each leg, was assigned to one of these four conditions. These four conditions were, number one, in this condition, they rested for one minute between sets. Number two, in this condition, they rested for three minutes between sets. Number three, in this condition, they rested for one minute between sets, just like for condition number one, but they matched the overall workload with condition number two. So in order to get the same overall workload across the session, weight times sets times reps, they did more sets to eventually equate with the workload performed in condition number two, the longer rest time intervals. And finally, condition number four had the longer rest times of three minutes, but also equated the workload to condition number one, the condition that trained with one minute rest intervals. In other words, the workload of conditions two and three was the same, and the workload of conditions one and four was also the same. What did they find? Well, they found that the longer rest time condition, condition two, did see more hypertrophy than condition one, the shorter rest time period. In other words, resting for three minutes did seem to lead to more hypertrophy than resting for one minute. Just like previous literature suggested, three to five minutes of rest between sets does seem to lead to more hypertrophy than say one or two minutes of rest. However, when equating for volume load, like they did for condition one and condition four, and between condition two and three, the same hypertrophy was seen in those comparisons. In other words, it seems like the rest period you take between sets does mostly influence hypertrophy through how it impacts overall performance and the overall workload that you can accumulate during a given session. So it looks like the effects of rest times between sets on hypertrophy is likely tension mediated. In other words, if you cut your rest times too short, you will likely negatively impact your performance in each of those sets, which will then lead to less workload across the session. And workload is essentially a proxy for overall tension, and tension leads to hypertrophy. So by reducing workload, you're reducing the amount of tension being exposed to your muscles, which is in turn reducing the stimulus for hypertrophy. As an aside, that's also why I recommend mostly taking the last set of an exercise to failure, but keeping a rep or two in the tank on the earlier sets of an exercise or towards the start of a session. By going to failure too early into a session, you may very well negatively impact performance for the rest of that session, in turn reducing overall workload, which then in turn reduces overall tension being exposed to your muscles. And finally, that could lead to less hypertrophy as opposed to training a bit more submaximally earlier into the session and for the first few sets of a given exercise and then finally taking that last set to failure. So get your stopwatch back out, set it to three to five minutes, rest for that time, do your next set, and you'll optimize your growth. That simple, right? Several studies have actually shown that by self-selecting rest intervals and sensing when to go for that next set when you feel ready, you can wind up in a pretty similar place as precisely timing your rest intervals. In other words, you can probably let go of the stopwatch and just go for your next set when you feel ready to do so. Especially if you're somewhat mindful of the right ballpark estimates of what the evidence says 
or good times to rest between sets. Let me finish this video by giving you some broad recommendations on how long to rest for if you don't want to use a timer or if you do want to use a timer but want to have a bit more precision in how long to set your stopwatch for. Generally, go for your next set when you think you can achieve a performance roughly the same or slightly below your last set. You shouldn't feel too out of breath anymore and you should feel like you're ready to go again. If it feels like you end sets because you're out of breath or because you weren't fully ready to go when you started the set, your rest time is likely too short and this could be leading to less hypertrophy. What we have in between? We have one minute rest. <laughs> For most isolation exercises, your rest time should probably be around one to three minutes between sets. For most compound exercises, your rest time should probably be around two to four minutes between sets for upper body compounds and about three to eight minutes between sets for lower body compound exercises. Importantly, you can likely still optimize hypertrophy even if you have a preference for longer or shorter rest durations. If you have a preference for shorter rest durations, you may need to do some additional sets to overall accumulate a sufficient workload across the session. If you have a preference for longer rest durations, you may need to do fewer sets compared to if you were resting, say, one or two minutes between sets. Finally, it's relatively unclear if longer or shorter rest durations are actually better overall. In other words, if you do 20 short rest duration sets per week, could you do 20 longer rest duration sets per week and still recover and get more hypertrophy? We don't quite know that. The important thing is that you accumulate a sufficient workload across the whole session. That's the video. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe, Donate PayPal, my cat keeps appearing in these videos. She needs food, I haven't been feeding her. She is on a diet, she's a bit chunky, like me. Anyways, I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace. Cat check, what you doing? You don't like short rest times, do you? <laughs>